even if Sheena somewhere ever happens to see this video. It also went into my charge sheet, you know, Indrani Mukherjee is very ambitious. Do you reckon that uh, my ex-husband Peter Mukherjee became the CEO of Star without being ambitious? Prison is not what they show in movies. I won't have married Peter. An entrepreneur who had co-founded a media company. She was accused of a murder case. And after spending around seven years in jail, she's out on bail. She has released a book called Unbroken. What was the weirdest headline that you read? The most brutal one was where I was accused of filicide. The most brutal because I don't think any mother, any mother can uh, tolerate or accept being accused of uh, you know, taking the life of her own child. So that was the saddest, that was the saddest headline. And that is the accusation, right? But the weirdest was something like I used to do black magic. And I wish I could do black magic I wouldn't have spent six and a half years in prison. A mother is a mother. You are a mother. There is no good mother or bad mother. I don't tell you how you should raise your kids, so don't tell me how I should raise mine. So yes, I can understand that, you know, if you have, uh, let's say, gone and hurt anybody, anybody in life, it does not have to be your own child. I think that is a crime and that one can be judged upon and it does not have to be your child. How is one life more important or less important than another life. A, any murder is heinous. So this whole angle of the bad mother part came because I, as a minor, not even as an adult, I had left my children with my parents because I needed to pursue my education. So that was the really bad mother. So I am not the first woman in the world who has done this. And then again, again, assuming even if I'm the first mother in the world who has pursued her education because of that, I do not think I, it is my decision. They are my children. They are my children. If I do not have the means and the capabilities I did not have at the age of 17, 18, I did not have, I could not even support myself. So how was I meant to support my two really young toddlers? How? See, it is not a crime because I'm ambitious. It also went into my charge sheet. You know, Indrani Mukherjee is very ambitious. But there are three other co-accused who are men. It is not mentioned that they are ambitious. Now, do you reckon that uh, my ex-husband Peter Mukherjee became the CEO of Star without being ambitious? So my chiffon saris became, when I went into prison, became the talk of the town because now am I supposed to not have a good body because it upsets certain people? And do you think that all these big tycoons are so stupid that they are going to have a conversation with me and we are going to get kind of whatever this thing only because they are they that dumb that they are going to just see my chiffon saris and get yawed. She was 15 when your mom called you and told the financial conditions yeah. and she asked you to take care of both the children. Yes. So did she tell them that you were the mother or how did they? Sheena and Mikhail uh, by then knew about it. Yes, they knew about it. But uh, it was not through my parents, I think they knew about it. Sheena at least, I think they got to know from one of the family members and that is how it kind of happened. And, but they were already on record. They were their kids and that was that. And so it was a very complicated situation for all of us. But I also grabbed that opportunity because when I went to take them back with me, you know, when I started working and they were very young, uh, but neither were they ready to come back with me because they didn't even recognize me, you know. And also my parents didn't allow me to take them 
with uh, uh, with me. And that was one that, that time, of course, they couldn't decide for themselves because they were so tiny, right? And uh, it was a very difficult situation initially. But, you know, the love that I felt for them when I saw them the first time and uh, it was like almost like I knew them yet I didn't know them. It was that because I was away from them for almost 11 years. So which was a long time. So it was a very emotional moment when I saw them the first time in Kolkata when I walk out and you know I see and it's it's your mother's thing, right? I didn't see them for so many years, but the moment I saw them, I saw them standing there. I mean, you know, looking, I was standing on the other side, right? Waiting for them. And they were coming out. The moment I, there were so many other kids. The moment I saw both of them, I knew it was them. It was just one of those things. And I could see them looking out for me too. And they instantly, I mean, they also recognized me. So, so it is kind of, yeah, but um, I've had several very, very good moments and a lot of good times with Sheena because Sheena stayed with me in Bombay, unlike Nick Haile, who to study in Bangalore. And then there was a phase where he had to be put away in the rehab and then he was in Delhi. So Nick Haile really never stayed with me. You know? In fact, he also spent very little time with me together in the house because she was always boarding in the UK, even when I was in India. And then when I went back to the UK, she was still boarding. So, but Sheena, yes, we did spend a lot of time together. And um, I mean, I really, both of us became very, very close, really. So as a mother, what are you doing? Are, are you looking for? Of course, yes, absolutely. Particularly, you know, after I wasn't looking for her till I was in prison, but once I got to know, when several people came and said that we met her, it was more than one person who came and said, right? And then, of course, I am. I'm doing whatever in my own case. See, I'm not an investing, investigating agency, so I cannot um, do a legal search. But in whatever capacity, I can look for her. I am. I'm doing everything possible. I have seen the mobile footage. That is when we, that I have seen. The lady who saw her uh, has known her. She's a very esteemed lawyer in the country and has known Sheena for the last 20 years. So it's not that that lady doesn't know her, you know. She's, she was quite close to Sheena. So, so that's the thing. So let's, and the other person who claimed to have seen her is a police officer herself. So what, she has nothing to do with me. She doesn't know me. Why would she come in, just make up a story like that? And I did the right thing. Immediately I informed the CBI. I informed the CBI director that, look, this lady has said she has met her. So please go and retrieve the CCTV footage. You were in jail and you have written a lot about that in the book. Yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about your time in the jail? Or? Prison is not what they show in movies. So it is, that is not. That is also another sea of humanity. There are human beings who live there whether it is the police force or whether it is the prisoners. And I was in an under trial prison, so which is not a convict's prison. So uh, this is a much more liberated prison in terms of, because it's like a holding house. It is, you know, here there are accused. They are not convicted. These are people where there are allegations and uh, many, many people come out clean, acquitted after the trial is over. Yeah, there are lots of people. There are criminals, mind you. There are habitual criminals who have committed crimes, who have been convicted, they will again come back. So there are people. So everybody in prison, the way everybody in prison is not innocent, everybody is also not, not innocent. You know, everybody is kind of, there are people who are guilty, there are people who are innocent. So there's a mix. But I think prison per se is a very humbling experience. And it is a place where you meet people from all walks of life. 
and several of them having compulsions which drive them to crime, which in a normal world, for example, there are some people who sell drugs or some people who go to prostitution, but a lot of people get pushed into it and pushed into it even by their own families. It happens. And a lot of people have to do uh, things like that because they are not educated. Or even some people who are educated have no jobs and they get pushed to the wall. It's just that. And there is also another this thing where there is no proper provision of rehabilitating, you know, uh, uh, prisoners who go out, which is why again they get back to the same crime because when they come come out, people don't want to give jobs because they've been to prison. So it's a vicious cycle. So during your time inside the jail, um, did you introspect few all the things that you might have done differently before? I won't have married Peter. That I was very sure of because I think the one person who really I felt very, very hurt was by was Peter because irrespective of crime or no crime, I believe that a partner, be it your husband or your companion, needs to stand by you in your good times and your bad times. But he totally and completely abandoned me, which I have written in my book. I have forgiven him, but, uh, and I ha I'm almost over it because I've healed over a period of time. And, uh, but if I could change that, I would have never gone to prison in the first place if I wouldn't have met him and I wouldn't have married him. Uh, all of this kind of wouldn't have happened. But having said all of that, I think my answer again would be despite my uh, sadness. You know, I still feel sad sometimes when I think about it. I do feel sad. But if there is, because also I believe that karma is, you know, the hero without a cape. But at any point, and he did go to prison after that. And that is when he reached out to me and started communicating. And I did soften, mind you, I did soften. It was only after a couple of years I said no. I said I can still be good to him, but I do not need to be his wife anymore. You know, I don't need that piece of paper which binds me to him. And I was married to him for 17 years. It was not 70 days, so it's a long time. What is it? Everything. I was married, right? And now I'm single and free. That's, I think, the first thing. I feel very liberated. Emotionally, mentally, I have more me time. And I think I have seen life through a different lens. Uh, I have definitely become older. I don't know if I've become wiser, but... <laughs> Uh, I don't think I'll ever become wiser. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll continue making mistakes even in the future, like we all do. But uh, I think I'm a happier person. That I definitely am. You know, I feel much more happier. I feel much more peaceful from within. And uh, I am now being able to, I think, have relationships with everybody, be it family, friends, or if in life I ever have a companion in the future.